Welcome to this presentation about, as Ashi said, uh, how to generate custom second profiles with uh, Spectre Gadget. Uh, I'm Jose, I'm software engineer at Microsoft. I'm joined Microsoft this year to the Kinfo acquisition. I'm focused on Kubernetes and eBPF technologies. I'm, I'm currently working to maintain and develop Inspector Gadget tool. This is the agenda for today. First of all, I um, will make a brief explanation about what SecCom is and how it was integrated in Kubernetes. And then uh, I will introduce you the Spectre Gadget tool and its SecCom gadget. And finally, I will make a live demo to show how to generate your own SecCom profiles with the Spectre Gadget. Let's start with that introduction. Okay, first of all, SecCom stands for secure computing. It is a Linux kernel feature that allow us to restrict the system calls a process can do. Uh, so by blocking the system calls that our app does not need, we are ensuring that if anybody is able, if we have a vulnerability in our app and anybody is able to do remote code execution, they will not be able to do just whatever they want. They will be limited by what our application is able to do, what we allow using second to do to that application. So if, for example, the, our application does not need to, to fork another process or to execute a binary, we will block that with the second policy. And then if we have the vulnerability, that operations, that system calls will be also blocked. Now, now we have two modes. One is strict and the other one is filter. And the strict is the original one, the first that was developed. And it is strict, <laughs> as uh, the name says. Uh, it allows you just four system calls, read, write, exit, and secret tour. And any other, call, any other system call made by the process will be uh, returned with a signal, um, uh, with a sick heal signal sent to the process that triggered the system call. Uh, think, for example, this mod is uh, if you have a very simple networking application where you just need to do nothing beyond poor CPU usage and communicate it through a socket given to you, given to the application, then this will, this will be a, a correct mod that you will want to use. But now that we are in this context, that we are writing cloud native applications, work in this environment will be pretty difficult. This is why we have a second mod, which is called filter. In this filter mod, we can specify what we want to do for each system call. We will use a BPF filter, which will give you a, res a result. We will, we will configure a result for each system call. So for a given system call, we will allow that system call or kill the process or the thread that sent that issue that system call or return an error or log, we have many options. This filter mode is also known as mod two or second BPF because it uses a BPF filter. Now let's see how it was integrated within, uh, within Kubernetes. In Kubernetes, we have a security context section uh, within the, the container and the pod definition. Uh, we can set there the second profile that we are going to use. This is a feature that is stable from Kubernetes uh, 1.19. Uh, we have three options to configure the second profile types. Unconfined, which is basically disabled second. This is unfortunately the default configuration, but it will change in the long term. The second option is a runtime default, which is if you set this configuration to your pod, it means that your pod will run with the default profile defined by the runtime configuration, by the container runtime, runtime you are using in your cluster. So for example, Docker has its own container uh, default profile that is what most runtime use, but this is a good improvement because you are now using a second profile, but consider that it is, it is a, a default profile. So it needs to preserve all the functionality of the generic containers, of generic containers. So it's, it's okay, but if we are having, 
it will not be fit for any application we are developing. That's the reason why we have a sec uh, third option, which is called localhost. That is the, this uh, option allow us to specify which is the second profile that we are going to use in our pod. That second profile needs to be available in the node, in the kubelet second uh, folder. And with that uh, option, we are, will be able to configure our own custom profile uh, for our pods. This is how a second profile looks like. Uh, we will have a default action um, that we can, the name is self explain We have the architecture section, which is very important because the filter inside the kernel is done using the Cisco IDs and the ID, the IDs vary according to the architecture on which you are running your application. So it is very important to configure the architecture on which you are running your application here. And then we have the Cisco uh, field where we define, look that it is an array. So we can define for a subset of system calls, an action that will be, that will override the default action. So for example, in this example I put here, we have read and write that will be allowed instead of being return an error as the default action set. We can have many of these here and specify, define our own custom second profile. Now, uh, let me introduce you, the Spectre Gadget. This is the tool that we are going to use uh, to generate the second profile, but it has many other gadgets, so I, maybe it would be useful for you, and so I want to introduce you. Uh, our idea with Inspector Gadget is to make the tracing of cloud native application easier. Uh, to do that, we develop Inspector Gadget following these principles, these four principles. First of all, uh, when we work with in Kubernetes, we want to debug at pod level. Pits are not useful when we don't know which is the pod or the container from, it, uh, from which it comes from. Uh, Therefore, we need something that translate the process ID to pods and container. This is what Inspector Gadget is trying to do. Uh, of course, we also want uh, users want to filter using selectors that they normally use uh, to refer to Kubernetes objects. For example, I want to filter by labels, by namespace, and not to have to deal with pits and understand what is the the mountain space to, to attach it to a, to a container. No, we want to make it easier in the same way the user is already working. For example, if the user is working with kubectl like, with kubectl, we want to provide the same experience. So the user doesn't need to SSH into the node and to the, maybe the pod, a pod just to make some tests on that node. Or if maybe the user is using a web UI, to control uh, the cluster, for example, headlamp. We want to also, with Inspector Gadget, to provide a way so that the, this, uh, the web UIs can integrate our tool. Let me show you how it works very quickly. Uh, we have, with Inspector Gadget, two pieces. Um, the the kubectl plugin that runs in the local machine, and then we have, we have a pod that we deploy on each node this pod, we call it gadget. Uh, when you want to install Inspector Gadget, when you want to uh, install in your, in your cluster Inspector Gadget, you will use the kubectl gadget to ask the Kubernetes control plane to deploy that gadget pod inside all your worker nodes. We use a daemon set to do that, and we will have a gadget pod running on every working node of the cluster. Then, if, for example, when you want to execute uh, any gadget, for example, the second gadget, we will send the information to the gadget pod saying that we want to execute the second gadget, and then we will pass also the parameters, the filters we want to apply, and on which node we want to apply it, and then the gadget pod will generate the BPF code and install it in the kernel of every node. This will be replicated in all the, uh, all the nodes. Now, this is, uh, there are myriad of gadgets available. Uh, the ones in blue 
are the, the ones that we take from the BCC tools. Maybe you already know them. These are BCC tools that we are wrapping and enriching with the Kubernetes metadata. So for example, the open Snoop uh, tool that will show you uh, every time an file is being opened in your system, we will enrich it that information so we, you will see the bit of the process that is opening a file, the name of the file, and then you will have also the container on which it was executed, uh, the pod, the namespace, and all the Kubernetes information. This is what we are doing for the BCC tools. Uh, we are adding more and more. And so if you have any this particular need, please feel free to contact us. We will try to add that tool to our inspector gadget. And here, this is the list of the gadgets that we develop ourselves trying to cover the use cases that are not covered by the BCC tools. For example, here we have the DNS gadget that will show you the DNS requests that are being triggered inside the, your cluster. We have the second gadget that is the one we are going to talk today. Uh, for example, the process and socket collectors, which will uh, show you a snapshot of the process and the sockets that are running in your system. Of course, for our gadgets, we also have all the Kubernetes uh, metadata uh, available there. So for the DNS request, you will see from which, uh, from which pod it comes from, from which node, and every, all the Kubernetes information there. This is an example of how the command line looks like. For example, executing the exec snoop, you have, can use the selectors I mentioned before. We have uh, the labels, namespace, pod. You can use all of them, just a few of them. Uh, it is depending on your needs. Uh, this is how we can use inspector gadgets from the command line. But as I said, we want also to provide to our users the way to in integrate the inspector gadget tools inside the web UI. So the web UI will use the trace custom resource, which as you see, provide, contains more or less the same information that you execute when you are using the command line. You specify the gadget that you want to run, the node, and specify the filters. There are a couple of, uh, a couple of fields that are different, but it's more or less the same information. Let me show you, introduce you what exactly the second advisor gadget does and why we do it. So the idea is to generate with this gadget to generate a second a custom profile uh, that we are going to use for, for our application in order to avoid using a generic one or to not having a second profile at all. We use BPF, eBPF, to record the system calls that are issued by each container then we use this information to generate a custom second profile with a default action Erno. So any uh, system call that is not in our allowed list will be returned by an error, will, be, will not be allowed and will, be, will return an error. Uh, I would like to say that it is important that when you are running the gadget, uh, it's important to cover the full life of the of the pod. For example, you should start the gadget uh, to start monitoring the system calls, then start the pod to uh, capture the system calls that needed to bring up the pod, then terminate the pod, and then you will have all the system calls that this, the pod needs to in its full life cycle. Uh, how to use the gadget? As I mentioned before, we have two options. You can use the QCTL gadget CLI, or you can use the trace custom resource uh, to integration with web UIs. Pre the profiles are generated in two ways. You can start and stop the gadget, and then a profile will be generated, the policy will be generated, or you can start the, the gadget and terminate the pod if, to, cover all the, to cover all the life of the pod example, as I said before, you start monitoring and you then deploy your pod, uh, interact with the pod, generate all this, issue all the system code that it will need to execute, and then you close the pod. In that moment, the, our gadget will generate automatically a, a second profile. Okay, we have these two options. 
the policy that is generated, we have, uh, you can, in order to use the policy that is generated, you will have to copy it inside the nodes, uh, as I explained, because you need to specify the, uh, the path where it is present inside the, your node. But if you are using a Kubernetes security profile operator, you can use it to make it installed in your own by yourself the, the, the policy so that you don't have to SSH into the node, copy the file, and do it by hand. Okay, so let me show you a demo. It will be easier to understand everything with a demo. Just a second. Okay. In my, here I have a three nodes cluster, okay. Uh, let me let's start installing the the kubectl gadget which is the one that needs to run in the local machine so you can see it. okay it is not installed we can install it using crew crew install gadget and this is the easiest way to install the latest version available for the gadget okay perfect we have uh, gadget version we have the, this is the latest version we have and for example if you execute help you will see all the available comments that we have the gadget that we have here are the second advisor this is the one that we are going to use today okay now that we have the kubectl gadget we need to uh, we need to deploy the gadget pod on every node we can do it also doing gadget as I explained, gadget deploy. Let's see what it does. It will create the custom resource definition, which is the one that I explained before, it is a trace. So this is, will, it will be used by the, by the web UI to, uh, to drive the, the gadget, to execute the gadget. Then if we go down, oops, too much. Okay, for example, here we have the demo set that will be the one in charge of deploy the gadgets. Here are the gadget. This is the gadget pod that we will have on every working node. So let's do it. STL. Okay, let's check it is running now. Same cube system. Okay. We have three uh, running pods we have because we have three nodes. Okay. Now let's check if it is the correct version. Everything is running okay. We have uh, logs. We can use log gadget. Mm, let's try this one, for example. Grab. Okay, we have, so in the pods, we have also the same version running. Now, uh, to uh, make this demo, we are going to use a work log. We prepare, uh, we have also this available in our repository. It is available in docs, examples. It's the same guy we, we have in the guide. So we will have everything running in the second demo namespace. This is mainly the task that we are going to do. We are listening on port 80 and we will return just hello, hello world. Okay, we have here the service that's listening 6,000 port and the tag is 80, okay. And so let's apply this, kubectl, oops, apply. Okay, everything's created. And now we want to, let me show you also the pod that we are going to use at as a work log. This is the pod that is using the, what we defined before, but the most important point is here is, here is the second, the security context. Look that we are defining 
that we will not use SECCOM for now because this is the phase where we are going to monitor what the, our application is doing to then generate a, a second profile. So let's apply also this. Oops. Mm -hmm. Apply. Okay, let's check it's running. Uh, wait. Okay, running. Get bots. Second demo. Okay, everything's running now. It's running now. Uh, we can now start use our gadget to monitor what it's, what uh, our robot lock is doing. Uh, gadget second profile and second advisor. <laughs> so we can second and demo, mm, and we specify our path. Here we have. Oops, ah, okay, of course, I have to start it. Let's clean up. Start, this is the, the trace ID we are going to use to stop it. So now we are going, what we are, will do will be to interact with the gadget, okay? So that we can generate all the system calls that our uh, work log needs. So for example, port, let's export this so that I can use just local host mm -hmm. 80 because we are exporting the service here. And here we are. This is the output of our word lock. Um, let's kill this. Okay. Now let's consider that this is the work that our application needs to do. This is all the work that our application needs to do. So we start monitoring, we collect all the system calls that our application do during its normal life. And then we stop, we can stop uh, the gadget. We use this. Consider that if you maybe uh, forgot the, the trace ID or you don't remember it, you don't have it anymore, you can use list minus A, uh, let me show it better, okay, and you have the trace ID here. So stop, and this is the same. Okay, let me put it bigger. Okay, look, the, uh, the profile that was generated with what we just did. Okay, we have the, as I said, the default action is Erno. We will return an error, the architecture, because I'm working in this architecture. And then we have here the list of the system calls that were triggered while we execute this cure. Okay, it's cool. Uh, as you can see, the list is quite short, but it is because we start monitoring uh, the pod after the pod was already running. Look that. The pod was already there when we start monitoring. So as I said before, we recommend to do it, uh, to include also the startup of the pod. This is very useful when you just want to check where the system calls that a given, a given operation generates, but let's try, let's try again. Uh, at including the bring up of the pod, and I will want I want to show you what is the difference with the system calls. Okay, uh, let's first delete the pod. Uh, yeah, delete. Let's delete. Then we will first start the gadget. We will do in the opposite uh, position, start the gadget, then deploy the, the pod. In that way, we are including also the system call requires to, to bring out the pod. Uh, and let's interact, interact with it as we did before. Okay, then cool, and let's kill it. We are just killing the, the forwarding. And now we can generate again our our uh, policy and let's see the difference okay look at the big difference 
Now, this, this second profile will include all the system calls that we have here, but it will include also all the system call required to bring out the pod. This is why it is so different, uh, because this is why we have more system calls here. But now, as I said, in order to use this system call to secure our pod, we will have to copy this file, put it in the file, and copy inside the node. And this is something I would like to avoid for this uh, demo. So I will show you that, as I told you, I, we can use the Kubernetes and security profile operator to install our gadgets, our profiles, sorry. And so we have an integration also for this in our gadget. Let me show you first, mm, delete the pod. Let me show you the example. Okay, so now we will start the gadget, but we are going to use the integration with uh, the security operator. Let me show you, help. You have, you have here the output mode. You can have it, the output in the terminal as we did before, but you can also use the second profile mode, which will interact with the security operator. So, um, okay. The usage is the same. Now deploy our gadget, interact equal again with it. Uh, port. Cool. And stop it. And now, as explained in the presentation, we want also to uh, to include the termination of the pod. So the correct way is as we are doing here, start monitoring, oops, sorry, start monitoring, then deploy the pod, interact with the pod, and then let's kill the pod. Delete. And now you can see that we will generate automatically uh, the profile get, second profiles, okay. and here we have our profile is generating. Okay, install. Uh, now, what we want to do is to apply the, the, the profile that we generate. Let me show you better gadget. Hello. Okay. We can see the profile. This is, these system calls are the same that we saw before. Actually, they are not exactly the same because this time we terminate the pod to generate the policy instead of stopping the monitoring and in fact, in fact, we have kill, the kill system call here that was not present here. Oh, be, okay, here. Look that it is not present here. So the best way to, to always cover all the system calls that are needed is to, as we did here, start the policy, do everything we need to do, terminate the pod, and then the policy will be generated automatically. Okay. Now let's use this uh, this policy. Uh, we have already let me delete. Uh, this is just already delete. So we have um, already prepared another YAML file with the confined configuration. Look that the difference between these two uh, pod definition is that first we were using the unconfined, and now we will use the poly, the profile that we already we just generate. Look the name. This is the operator, and this is the same that the the profile that we just generate. Okay, let's deploy this. So deploy. No, deploy no. Apply. <laughs> and this time we will use confine. Confine. Okay, let's interact with our pod to understand to verify that the pod is still doing its work. So we didn't uh, break any functionality. Uh, we press port, okay. Cool. Okay, so the functionality that we cover is there and everything is there. Now let's kill this, okay. And for example, if we try to do, no, if we try to do something different, for example, to 
execute bash in our pod. Let's see where's the output. And we have an error because this is something that we want, for example, to avoid. We want to avoid this. These are, this execution requires uh, uh, other system calls that we didn't monitoring. So we can see that our second profile is blocking anything different than what we said that it is, has to be able to do. Okay, this is uh, all for the example, and I think I'm done. Let me go back to the presentation. If there's no question, I would like to uh, to ask uh, people to if they like what I present today, we will be, will be delighted to receive their contributions. I will let here the the links in the presentation. Um, for example, I will say that we, while we were working on the second advisor gadget, we identify another use case that we can use for inspector gadget. Uh, for example, in the example I showed before, uh, the default action is return an error. But if you are testing that second profile, how do you know that there is a given system call that was blocked, but maybe you didn't notice it when you were using your application. This is something that you can do manually. You could change the default action and put log instead of error. And then every system call that is uh, issue apart, uh, um, different than the ones that are allowed will be logged in the var syslogs but you will need to SSH into the node and check the var syslogs there to see what are the system calls that were executed. And this is something, one of the principles that we are using in Inspector Guide, that this is something that we want to avoid the users to do. So we are working, currently already working on a new gadget to allow you to, uh, to see what is being blocked by the second profile. It will be named uh, second audit or will be an option also to execute it, you will be able to execute it to verify what are the system calls that are being blocked by a given uh, second profile. So if while you are using the inspector gadget, any of our gadget or in your dailies, you see that there is a use case that uh, you think inspector gadget will cover, feel free to contact us to ping us in the, in the Kubernetes Slack. Or, we are open to hear you. Um, thank you.